Yes, my, uh, my name's Srita Dunapalan. I'm the technical manager at One Laptop Per Child Australia. Um, so the, what, what I'm here to talk about is the um, it's first, firstly, an overview of the One Laptop Per Child program. I won't dwell, dwell too much on that, on that because it's been done to death before. Um, but I want to focus on what's been going on in Australia um, over the past um, year especially, well, even six months. There's, there's just been so much stuff that's been happening. We've been going through constant change. It's been, it's been amazing. Um, so a little, little bit about old PC to start with. Um, it... it it was announced in 2005. The, the idea was to use 20, 21st century technology to, um, to um, try and rectify the problems that were seen in the developing world um, uh, with, uh, with, with education. So uh, large class sizes, lack of resources, all, all of that stuff. Now, clearly, it's not, it's not a silver bullet. It never was intended to be. Um, what it definitely isn't is a, a laptop program or a technology program. It just happens to make very clever use of technology. Um, and it, it, but it, re it really does that as, as a part of, of a, a really large, sustainable, long-term project um, with, 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 with some pr pretty good, um, pretty good prin principles underpinning it, I think. Um, so just just to go through the the five core principles that underpin everything that um, that old PC does. Now I'm I'm speaking for the global project for the moment. I'll get into Australia in a second. Um, but the five key principles are um, ch firstly child ownership. Um, we uh, we want we want the children to feel like their EXO is theirs. So I haven't really said much about the EXO, but that's that's it there. Won't dwell on it. Everyone's seen one. If if not. Grab me later. There's plenty of information online. Um, so we, we want the kids to feel like they own theirs. It's a personal learning device, and that should that should hopefully give them the freedom and uh, an opportunity to learn however and uh, wherever they like, whether it be in the classroom or after hours at home. Um, they 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 should, kids should just be able to sit under a tree in the middle of nowhere and have their exos just talk with each other and have them be able to collaborate, share information, that sort of thing. So it's not just a, it's not a glorified ebook reader. It's a lot more than that. If you took a imagine if you could digitise thousands of books and stick it on a, on a machine, that's great. I mean you've got you, you've got a you've got an ebook reader there. You know, pat yourself on the back. But what if you were what, what if you were to to make that um, more interactive? You, you let you let kids actually engage in exercises and and have immediate feedback on their device and while you're at it let's let's make these devices talk with each other let's let's make sure that the kids can actually learn from one another um, so that the the, t the teacher is not the only font of knowledge around here the kids learn as well um, we've we, um, We've seen in deployments some places where the kids, well, actually this is quite often, kids pick this up faster than the teachers. And the teachers, yes, very important, and I'll get into that in a moment. Um, uh, teacher engagement is, is essential. But uh, we also want the kids to be able to learn on their own without the teacher as well. Um, so uh, if, if I was to continue, so emo meaning that demonstrations often go wrong. Now, if I was to, let's see, there's my pointer. If I was to switch back. Now, I'm keeping OpenOffice running in the background, so this is going to be a bit slow. Um, so I'm, I'm, using, I'm using OO for Kids, which is a, a, basically a version of OpenOffice that has been um, um, altered to fit into the native sugar environment. Now, I'll show you what that environment is. Where it comes from is um, some guys at MIT who, who had been doing research for, in education for decades um, realised that one, one of the fundamental problems of introducing technology into schools was that we're really pushing a, a office-centric paradigm onto kids. Um, we're, giving, we're, 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 we're giving them these metaphors of desktops and files and folders and, and through that, we introduced problems like, oh, well, I, I saved this document and I stuck it in some folder somewhere and I can't remember where the heck it is. I mean, that happens to everyone. Um, why should we inflict that upon children? So there, there, are, other, there are other ways to, to deal with that. And what they came up with was um, what's, what's known in, in UI circles as a, as a zoomable interface. Um, so as, if I was to start at the top level, 
um, the, the highest level of zoom. This this here, uh, hopefully my laser pointer works. Uh, no, no, I'm pointing it the wrong way. Unco, emo. There you go. Um, <laughs> so this this is called the neighbourhood view. I, I like to call it the playground view. Um, you've got the you've you've got the child in the centre, and then you've got these circles are other wireless points around them. If there are other children on the network with their XOs, they will show up as other little kids like that. And then you can hover your mouse over them and you get options like, I want this kid to be my friend so that they, they show up whenever, um, whenever they're online. Um, and then you can, you can also share activities, do things collaboratively, that sort of thing. So the, fr the friends view or the team view is that one there. Now, my, my little guy is quite lonely. He's got no friends. Um, that's, that's unfortunate, but in a, in a classroom situation, you, you'll, have, you'll have a lot more. Um, now, zoom into the next level. This is where the child spends a lot of their time. This is known as the, um, uh, the, 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 the me view. That's what I like to call it. This, you know, that's, that's me there. I've given myself some nice Australia Day colours. Um, and around, around this are, are your favourites. They're the the activities or the, the programs. We call, we call the programs activities because um, they, we, we're emphasising the fact that children are doing something, um, emphasising the fact that they're learning together and that sort of thing. It's not, it's not a program that you run which sounds quite impersonal. Um, so the, the, the child's favourite activities are, are around in this circle. This is actually the, apart from OO for Kids, which I just added for the purposes of this presentation, this is the default view you see on an XO that's being deployed in Australia. Um, there, are, there are a lot more than that. Um, if I was to click on the list view over there, um, there's a whole lot more that you can scroll through and you can type to search and stuff like that. But what's interesting, getting back to, to the problem I, I mentioned before about losing track of files and so on. Uh, now, imagine I'm a child. I made a drawing two weeks ago. How do I find it? I don't want to have to dig through files and folders. I want to. I want to be able to search for it. I want to be able to filter for it, and um, and go by go by time as well. Now, the uh, slight apologies. The graphics are a bit slow because I'm using a USB to VGA adapter. Um, I'll get into that in a moment. That's that's something that I'm I'm pretty excited about. Um, we didn't have support for that um, only only a week ago, really. Um, uh, but uh, let me highlight one activity that we have developed in Australia. We, one thing we really want to do is improve the, the musical capabilities of the EXO. There are, there's some pretty impressive stuff in there. The speakers aren't fantastic, but if you were to plug in some external headphones and microphones, that sort of thing, actually this, this is a mistake I made. Um, is, is it possible to get external sound or anything on this? If not, I'll put the volume up and hope that people can hear. Um, so while, while that's going, I'll just explain this. Um, now, this isn't going to look fantastic on the resolution because when I'm using this adapter, it alters the resolution. Some activities aren't quite compatible. But um, basically, this, this activity is called Music Painter. It's something we developed because we really wanted to combine the ideas of, of visual art and, and audio art. Um, kids, especially in remote Australia, um, culturally, they're, they're really good at art, generally. Um, that's that's what that's the kind of thing they gravitate towards. So providing those sorts of um, those sorts of activities is, is of great assistance. Uh, okay. You need sound, right? Yeah, I need a standard audio jack. Is that possible? Okay. Well, let's uh, let's move on from that. I'll get back to that later. Basically, what I did was that I just. I just drew, drew something, and um, you can actually play that back as music. It gets synthesised on the fly. It's actually, uh, it's actually some really clever stuff happening behind the scenes. It's not just playing pre-recorded audio samples. Um, it's, it's, the kind, it, it's actually the, sa the same kind of technology that, that, was, that you see on high-end karaoke machines, um, kind of hardware that, that you would, would have paid uh, $20,000 for. Um, 10 years ago is actually available on the XO now. There's the exact same code as well. Uh, okay. Um, let me. Let, 
Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, come on, try this one. See if it works. Okay. Good point. Okay, let me switch back to Music Painter. Okay, and I'll remove the frame. That's the, that's the other thing. The frame is basically your taskbar. Um, so you've got, you've got right, right at the top your, your views, which I pointed out before, your running applications, which are there, um, status indicators like, um, like networking and volume, battery. Um, friends you're connected with basically show down there as other little XO people. Um, now, if I was to remove that and then give this a play, now hopefully this works. Oh, sorry. Is that working? Oh, it's not. Let me try again. Can people hear that? Okay, cool. Um, so it's 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 quite it sounds quite simplistic. Um, and it's not supposed to be high and complicated, but there is there is quite a bit of smarts behind there. Um, the code's pretty cool. Um, now switching back. Uh, and, da, 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 whoops. Okay, um, so moving on, old PC Australia, who are we? Um, firstly, we're, we're a separate entity from old PC. We subscribe to, to their ideals, we, we, we want to achieve what they're, what they're trying to achieve, but we want to focus on Australia. Um, it sounds a bit weird, we're a developed country, why on earth would we need a one laptop per child program? Why would we need a program that is designed for children in the um, developing world, um, you know, isn't that insulting? Why? What's what's the point? Well, you go you go out to outer regional, remote, and very remote Australia, which are the the um, areas that we go to. Those are official um, Australian Bureau of Statistics designations, and unfortunately, you see children that have been um, uh, not so well represented by by the capitalist model, not um, not so well represented by um, by the money that's in Australia. Um, and they're in very difficult uh, circumstances. When I say difficult, I mean, I mean there, are, there are harsh environmental conditions and there are vast distances to cover, um, very thinly um, populated, like sparsely populated, so you don't have major regional centres with which you can, you can build economies of scale and, and that sort of thing. Um, so uh, we, we, in, in that sense, we have um, similar environments to, to what you see in, in the developing world. Um, so, old PC Australia, in, um, the, the, the general idea started around 2006. It was officially turned into um, an organisation in 2008. We have deductible gift recipient status, which means that we're recognised by the government um, as, as being a valid charity, and if you give us money, it's all tax deductible and all of that stuff. Um, that, was, that was incidentally um, announced by uh, Kevin Rudd, who was, you know, at the time, Prime Minister. Um, and he, he was he was speaking at our um, at our first anniversary gala dinner, which was um, in May last year. I wish I had a photo of that. Um, I'm keeping my slides simple because I'm not sure how well this experimental version of um, of Open Office for Sugar is going to hold up. Um, just to move on, that's that's our official mission statement. Um, that's that's what we're trying to achieve. Now, that's a, it's it's a very long sentence, and well, that's what mission statements often are. You're trying to squeeze as much into uh, 40 words as you can. So let me let me break it down. Um, so our mission is to enhance learning opportunities. So through the XO, we're 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 trying to um, improve um, e educational opportunities. We're not we're not teaching computing or anything like that. We're using computers to teach. There's a um, there's a subtle difference there, but it's very very important. Uh, we're not involved in vendor training or anything. This, the, the computer is, is like another pen and paper um, or another textbook. Um, so continuing on, 400,000 children. That's a lot of children. And that really took me aback when, when, I, when I saw that. There are 400,000 children in these areas of Australia that are officially categorised as outer regional, remote and very remote. Yes? Please define said term, regional and remote. 
Um, those are official designations by the Australian Bureau of Statistics. Um, I can't. I don't know much more than that. <laughs> they, 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 they are official. That's all I can say. Take it up with the ABS. Otherwise, yes. Trida, um, I believe when when they worked it out as well, they kind of did it on uh, economics income economic scale demographics. So it was like how they actually it wasn't it's remote and isolated, but it's also these kids are what's considered in living in living below the poverty line kind of styles Correct. compared to the Australian what we live in in the city. Correct, and that, that was the next point I was going to get to because, yes, yes, we work on remoteness. Now, we're not discriminating based on race or anything. We, sometimes we get described as, as a program for, for um, Indigenous kids. We're not. We go after remoteness, but we, what we also go after is socioeconomic indicators, and the ABS keeps statistics on that. There's, there's an average level, which is, which is 1,000. We, we focus on the communities that are below 900. Yes? Uh, do you know approximately how many of these kids are Aboriginal and how many are not? Uh, not off the top of my head, no. Um, I'm sure that's easy to find out, though. Um, and uh, let's see, age 4 to 15. Now, 4 is pretty much when you start kindergarten. Um, and 15 is around year 8, year 9. Um, what, we, what we don't do is overlap with with uh, the federal government program, which you may, you may have heard of, providing laptops to schools in year, years nine and above. Um, so they get to year nine and they get their federal government laptop. And, and um, if they got an Exo in the previous year, they may keep it. But when, we're not giving, they, they won't receive two laptops in one year. Um, so again, remote Australia, con connected Exo laptop. Now, connected is an important word, and I probably should have bolded it. Um, we're, we, we want the Exos to. Firstly, be able to talk with each other. Um, now they do that. They do that very nicely. They're designed to. You basically kids just turn on their XOs and they they automatically see each other um, by creating an ad hoc network. The previous model XO ones had a mesh network, um, but that's mm, that's all mechanics underneath. The child doesn't care. They can they can just talk with each other. Nowadays, it's ad hoc using network manager and standard standard Linux type. Um, uh, technologies. Um, now, the, uh, the next thing I need to focus on is sustainable. Very, very, very important. We want these. We want these communities to have a sense of ownership over the program. It's not a. It's not a traditional um, uh, client vendor relationship. We don't want them to have to come to us for everything. In fact, that would be that would be a failure of our mission. I think. Uh, we really want to to buy buy this 2014 date. Um, have have these communities feel like they can manage most of the most of the project on their own. Now that also involves the that also involves government, Department of Education, and so on. Um, um, I, this 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 is a long term educational project. You'll really only see full results once these kids are grown up and they're able to to pick up jobs and 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 that sort of thing. We recognise that, and if they're fully dependent on us, then. Um, over that entire period, then it's, it's not going to be nearly successful. Now, 2014, we wanted to set an ambitious target. That's basically why 2014 is there. And there, there, is, there is a precedent. Um, Uruguay has full saturation. Every single child in the country, um, as part an of, of official government directives, has an XO uh, integrated with their, with their school learning and all of that stuff. Um, and that was, done, uh, that was done in, I think, about three or four years. Um, that's so, and that's that's 400,000 kids. Well, we have 400,000 kids as well. Um, the circumstances are a bit different. We have wider areas to cover, but um, yeah, we we reckon we can do it. Now, is that going to work? Okay. So some of the um, some of the challenges in Australian schools. Um, uh, Australian schools are interesting because, well, remote Australian schools especially are interesting in that um, this is a developed country, over, well, overall anyway, and so these schools, ha a lot of these schools have, uh, have computer networks, um, sat satellite internet, um, uh, electronic whiteboards, um, some have electricity, a lot don't as well, uh, probably generators in many cases, um, but uh, it means that some of the some of the things that the EXO was designed for don't quite match up. Um, so w one one example is that um, uh, there's a there's a service solution I'll get into in the, 
um, I'll get into in a moment, um, called called the XS, and that was that that was designed for it was designed for a place where there's no network whatsoever. It, it, it sets up its own DHCP server. It basically maintains its own network on its own, and you plug that into a standard network, and it's a complete pain in the pain in the butt to to manage, and it actually conflicts with existing networking resources. So we 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 got we got that and we created a simplified version. I'll go go into that in in more depth. But um, uh, there are also vast differences in climate. You go up to top end Northern Territory or Queensland, it's humid, it's hot, stinking hot. Um, you, you go you go down to the Alice Springs region and it's desert. It gets cold at night, hot and hot during the day. Um, you need you need something that's that's really rugged that can survive that kind of environment. And the stated lifetime of EXO is five years. Um, that's an eternity in, in, in technology terms. So to have a device that actually lives through all of that is, I, I, I think, speaking, speaking for myself, it's quite, quite extraordinary. Um, um, other, other problems are um, supplying power to these things. Um, even in metro schools, most buildings are quite old and they weren't designed for every child to have an electronic device that needs to be plugged into a wall. There aren't enough power points. Even if there were, you would very quickly max out the power supply. Um, I've, heard of, um, I, I've heard of schools asking their kids to take, not, not XOs, but just standard laptops that they're given to kids, asking their kids to take their laptops home to charge them. And that's the only reason. There's no, there's no educational... Um, driver there, they, they don't, they, they're not thinking about these kids learning at home, they're like, well, we don't have enough power points here, take, take your laptops home and charge them so you can use them the next day. And if your battery runs out during the day, you're probably, you're probably in trouble. Um, but um, the, the EXOs have um, quite, quite a long battery life, not just, in, not just from um, charge to flat, but also in terms of lifespan. Um, they, can, they can take about 2,000 charge discharge cycles, it's about four times better than a standard, um, standard um, uh, lithium-ion battery. Um, other things are environmental concerns. Um, it's the, the battery doesn't contain mercury or cadmium or, or lithium or any of that. Uh, sorry, it does contain lithium, but it, doesn't, it, 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 is, it is a much safer battery than um, other, other kinds. Um, there is no mercury in the EXO either. Um, other other problems are remoteness. It's difficult to service a school that's out in the in the middle of nowhere. Um, how how do you how do you get a technician out? And that's the, the that's that's not the question you really should be asking. Unfortunately, that's the question that most people do ask. The question you should be asking is how do you enable the locals to manage things for themselves? And we we really want the schools and the communities and especially the children um, to to manage to to manage things. The exos can actually be pulled apart and repaired by kids, which. Uh, which is pretty cool. Um, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't see that happening with a with a device from a major vendor. You'd probably void your warranty if if you were to do something like that, and then they, they wouldn't they wouldn't help you ever again. Um, uh, an, another problem is teacher turnover. Um, teachers in these remote schools often don't last very long, so we could go through all the trouble of enabling a teacher, training them up, all that stuff, and then they um, then they pick up and leave. Um, that's of course their choice, but it means that the community is kind of left high and dry, going, "Oh, what do we do next with the, all these devices?" Um, but, but if we were to enable the children and the teaching assistants and people who are there long term and actually have a vested interest in the success of the program, then it's it's going to be a lot more successful. Um, we do a lot of work to to help that out. Um, let's see what else. Moving on, I think my. I think my presenter has died, uh, and I just went. Oops. Okay. So the XO, I've, I've already gone into that to some extent, but other other things are. Um, it has a it has a wonderful screen technology. You can actually read the screen in direct sunlight. Um, have you if you've ever tried getting a laptop or your your touchscreen phone and trying to read that in direct sunlight? You can't. Now, when when we're tr we're, we're trying to promote an idea of education where kids can can learn anywhere. They should be able to go outside. The thing has a camera. They should be able to take pictures of, of flowers and animals and that sort of thing. Um, but if they can't see what's going on on the screen, then there's, then, then there's not much point to it. Um, and, and incidentally, when you're using it in direct sunlight, it basically works in a, it works in a very similar way to an e-ink display. Um, you, get, you get an incredibly high resolution, very crisp text. 
Um, it, 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 is, it is monochrome, but you, you, can have, um, you can have motion pictures on it. You, couldn't, you can't do that with standard eating technologies. It'll probably take a couple of seconds for each page to turn on, on, on those things. Um, now, we've been, we've been deploying these new XO 1.5 models, uh, which, are, which are these things, since May uh, last year. We were the first country in the world to start deploying them, um, which, which made things interesting and meant we, we hit some snags and some bugs and so on, but we, we got past that. Um, it's a lot, lot of fun doing that. Now these, um, just to summarize, it's the same, it's, it's the same industrial design as the XO ones. They look, they look almost identical. There's just a few subtle differences on the, on the, on the shell to, um, to, to indicate that it's a 1.5. Internally, it's a, it's a lot faster. It's got, um, it's got four times the RAM. It's got a gigabyte. It's got four times the storage. It's got four gigabytes, um, and and um, so it's it's much more it's much more useful for kids. You, you're not waiting so long for things to load and so on. Um, now, hardware is only as good as its software. Um, so what we've done is that we've taken the standard OLPC operating system and we've created our own variant, which which I like to call the XOAU. Um, and what, um, we, we've got we've got a pr pretty cool pretty cool development process there. Pretty much as soon as OLPC come out with something, we can come out with our own variant within a within a couple of hours. What we have there is a lot of um, a lot of localized content and our the our own activities that we've chosen. Um, we've got. Um, what else? We've got um, some system updates on there. We've fixed some bugs. Um, now, this one's not going to make me popular, but I, ha I, 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 under a lot of pressure, had to include the Adobe Flash Player. Um, the, the, um, whoops, my keyboard started working again and going nuts. Um, so, th um, yeah, we, I, I, I had a lot of pressure to do that because Flash is very widely used in Australian schools. And you just can't get away from it. Um, there is the included Ganache player, but unfortunately, that's just not compatible enough to to be of to be of real use. Um, so, what's next? Um, mini server. I'll quickly go into that. It's ba basically we've we've developed a way of getting the XO and turning that into an update server that other XOs can can be imaged from. Um, or well not image, rather upgraded from in a in a lossless manner. Old PC had this amazing technology called NAM Blaster, which is um, an XO can can blast an image wirelessly to as many other XOs as as you need. Um, it's a very it's a very quick and efficient way to um, to image many XOs at once. But unfortunately, that's blasting a fresh image, so it wipes what's on the XOs. If the kids have work on their XOs, they need to make sure that they're saved first, otherwise they get lost. Our solution was the mini server, which is something. Uh, quite similar, but it doesn't upgrade instead. Um, so that's that, that's an Australian development there. Um, XS, that's a server that I, I referred to before. Um, that that is designed as a drop-in server. You go go to ne to go to a place where there's no network whatsoever. You plonk it in, give it a wireless access point. Um, it marshals communications between the XOs, makes the network a lot more efficient. Um, you don't need a server for XOs to talk with each other. But this just makes it a lot more efficient. Brings other benefits like classroom segregation. If you've got a school of 200 kids, then you can go. Uh, teach, a teacher can go into the web interface, which is based on Moodle, and go. Okay, the, this child can only see the other children in in his or her class, and and that way it's a, it's it's a lot more manageable. And you can also keep track of the XOs. You can back them up. Do other things like that. Yes. Is the uh, XS uh, a software you can drop on any hardware platform, or does it is yes. it an actual product, a hardware product? Yes. The um, so just to emphasize, the XS is software. It's a it's um, it's a distribution. It's uh, it's it's Fedora based. Um, at the moment, the official XS is based on Fedora nine. Uh, what we have done is come up with an XSAU. Fedora nine is getting a bit old, and um, there was, there was a lot of stuff in the in the um, official excess that we really didn't want, um, and that just complicated the the setup. We wanted to make it much more simple, so that it's basically rather than a fork of Fedora, it's just Fedora with extra packages. 
we wanted the, the networking to just make sense to a standard Linux sysadmin. Um, we wanted it to be to be more maintainable. Uh, we wanted it to be easily installable from a from a USB stick. Um, we wanted the installations to be able to be automated via Kickstart. Um, if you're familiar with that, it's basically Red Hat's technology to automa or automate installations. Um, and and so we ca we came up with the XSAU. Now we've got we've got a version. Our, our official version at the moment is is based on. Um, on the on the present um, um, XS, which is Fedora 9 based, but we have one that that I want to release very soon um, as an official version that's based on Fedora 11. Now, the reason why we're going with Fedora 11 is that, firstly, it's the um, it's the same OS base as what's on the XOs, and um, the the other reason is that you can actually upgrade from Fedora 9 to Fedora 11, but um, the the um, the Red Hat at, or Fedora Anaconda installer doesn't go more than two two versions in advance, so that provides us with some compatibility with the with the excesses already out there. Um, what it also does is solve the problem of existing networks. These schools already have networks. We don't want to put another device on there that tries to duplicate existing network resources. It's just going to wreak havoc. Um, so. We've greatly simplified the configuration, so it's just a drop-in server. It just plays along like a standard, um, uh, polite network citizen. Uh, that, and that's, that's, that's made a big difference. It's made the excess viable in Australian schools, but not just in Australian schools, in any school that has an existing network. So that means that, means that the server solution now is viable in, in even developed countries. Um, XOP. This is something I'm really excited about because power is a, power is a problem in these in these environments. Um, um, if every child has a laptop, how on earth are you going to charge them all? Um, and it, a lot of these places just don't have reliable power. They might be on generators or something like that. They may have power that's switched on only at night. Um, and so the the XO, the XOP provides a very efficient way of doing it. Now, I was going to, I was, I was going to bring a, um, a sample of that. Um, unfortunately, I don't have it on me at the moment. But essentially, what it is, it's a plastic rack um, that is assembled. It's just snapped, the pieces snapped together like Lego. Each rack holds five XOs. Now, the rack portion was actually designed uh, by by OLPC a while ago. It never made it to production. Uh, one reason why it didn't was that they didn't really have a suitable charging portion to it. It was just the plastic rack. Um, we came up with the with the charging brick, and what that does is it slots into the rack quite neatly, um, and the 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 bricks daisy chain onto each other, meaning that off one power point you can just keep daisy chaining these racks on and on, and charge heaps of XOs. And we've, we've calculated based on the power draw that on a 230 watt power supply, which is what you get in Australia, um, you can charge up to 75 XOs of one power point. Volts. Volts. You are correct. Um, going to a case study now. Um, my, my co-speaker has far more experience in this, but I'm, I'm just going to talk about one of my experiences in a, in a community um, because I, I found it quite eye-opening. Um, I, I, I went up to a, to a community in, um, in East Arnhem Land, known as, the, uh, known as Darlinboy in the Yurikala homelands. And this place, uh, well, firstly, it's a fantastic community. It was a school of about 25-odd kids. Um, the whole community would have maybe been 50 people, something like that, and um, they 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 had this. The school was basically a shed, and they'll give. They had satellite internet. They had um, they had two PCs that were that had been given to them, but <coughs> guess what? No electricity. <laughs> um, the the only electricity was a um, well the. the the, the only electricity for the school during the day was a tiny generator. It was about yay big, and it wasn't it wasn't really sufficient for the for the technology that was sitting there in the school. Um, there was a big generator that was turned on only at night, specifically to pump water up into the water towers from the from the ground. That's that was their that was their water supply. Um, so what what we had was um, we inst installed a an XOP charging rack. We had an XO for every single child, 
and that small school generator was able to cope with all that so and also charge the satellite modem and the and the wireless access point we're just using a a linksys wrt 54 gl um, flash with ddwrt and um, that that did the trick in this case and um, so we had all these kids up online um, um, I, was sh I was showing them Google Maps. I thought this was really cool. I had I had Google Maps, and I was going, "Hey, well, you know, this is where you are. Let's zoom out a bit. Oh, look, there's all of Australia, and I'm down here in Sydney." Um, so it re I think I think it's a it's a it's a really good way to to open um, open children up to the world, and conversely, open the world up to the children as well. Uh, now, the sugar graphical environment, which is what I demonstrated before. Uh, that works on normal PCs. It's just it's just another it's just another GUI for Linux. Um, you can install it um, on most major distributions as packages. It um, a, a, you, you just you just go to your um, your login manager and you just choose Sugar just as you would GNOME or KDE or whatever. Um, so if you want to give that a shot, you you certainly can. Um, it's it's normally a you know apt-get install or a or yum install. Um, so to to develop and test this stuff, um, so my, my primary goal here is to try and encourage you guys to get involved in your in in, in our development and testing. That's what that's what we really need. Um, so there's there's sugar which I just described. There's also sugar on a stick, which is a bootable USB version of sugar, um, and that's that's being promoted by Sugar Labs, which is the parent organisation of sugar. Um, as, a, as an educational tool, so kids can just have their own version of sugar and stick, and take that around. They can they can use it at, use it at school, save their work to the stick, go back home, load it up on their computer, keep using it. That that sort of jazz. Um, the the underlying technologies behind sugar are pretty easy to get into. I mean, it's it's um, it, it's Python uh, based mostly. Um, underlying libraries are the GTK and GNOME libraries. Um, the the browse activity is based on Firefox. Um, the write activity um, is is essentially Abby Word. Um, um, you can you can even write applications in Flash, which which are interpreted using the the free software Ganache player, you, um, and that doesn't run in a browser. Actually, runs as a as an activity on its on its own. So if you're a Flash developer, then you can um, you, you can still code some pretty good stuff for Sugar. Um, now. The the OS like I like I mentioned before the OS on the XO is Fedora, um, so you, you can you can actually install Fedora packages. You can go to GNOME, and um, I'll sh I'll show that in a moment. There's GNOME on there, um, and you, you can just load the package updater, or you can just do YAM or or what have you. In fact, I'll I'll give that. Uh, see how we're going for time. Um, we're kind of running out of time, so I won't. But just take my word. Pardon. Okay. Oh, well. Okay. So let's move on. So I, it would be fantastic if you guys could get involved in our development. Um, I've I've got a boff tomorrow. Um, details up there. Lunchtime. And um, yeah, that's 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 the main website to go to if you if you really want to find out more about us from a from a developmental perspective. And uh, yeah, that's that's it from me. I'm going to hand it over to my co-presenter. Uh, his name's Ian Cunningham. He's been involved very heavily um, on the uh, technical deployment side of of One Laptop Per Child in the Northern Territory. He works for the Department of Education there, so he can provide a really good perspective um, from the educators' um, side of things. So you don't have to listen to my propaganda. You can listen pr to someone who's been there on the ground. Good afternoon, everyone. This is going to be fast. Uh, excuse me if I read from the notes because it's just going to be a, a core dump. The Northern Territory covers an area of 1.35 million square kilometres equal to the combined areas of France, Spain and Italy. 
All our schools connected to a wide area network with Windows 2008 servers at each school. The schools connect to the network via either a remote landline or two-way satellite links. Some remote schools have homeland centres. That's an example of uh, Raman Ginning, which is up the top there. To get in there, you've got to fly in. And uh, we use two-way two satellite links there. Whoop. Anyway, that's the existing sort of school infrastructure that we've faced with to try and incorporate these XO laptops and the XS server. So initially the XS server just wasn't compatible with our system. If you threw that in there, there'd be DHCP requests going from, or IP addresses from two servers and fiber optic links between buildings. You can't have two H, anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so to this end, the script was written for the XS server and to cut a long story short, the XS server now with our model just has one interface, it can be plugged into any school network and you've automatically got an, a Moodle server there for your sort of pre-configured if you like. Uh, in 2009 we ran a feasibility study with six grade two classes in Alice Springs. Uh, the main aim was to see if we could actually integrate these XOs into our existing network, and we found that we could. The original sugar interface was a bit clunky, and connection to the wireless access points was not reliable. However, the ability to re-image using USB stick into clone XOs using NAND Blaster was a boon. With the advent of the new image based on Fedora 11, the ability to switch between sugar and GNOME interface, the XOs ones have been given a new lease of life. Um, and as a result they're more stable and as a result of the trial we concluded that there was educational benefit in using the XOs and they could be integrated into the school network. So with NAND blasting, to cut a long story short, if we just use a USB stick and re-image one XO laptop it takes about what was it? About 16 minutes. We can re-image a class of 30 XO laptops in 46 minutes using NAND Blaster. So you think back if, if you in your school, how long does it take you to re-image a computer? In the Northern Territory Government where we're using Windows systems, it can take probably an hour or so per machine. Yes. Yeah. You're right. uh, this whole thing seems to be predicated on the fact that it is assumed that laptops will contribute to education. So has there been any study done on a group of children with laptops versus a control group without laptops to see whether their educational prospects are better? Not yet. The challenges we have, as uh, Shreda mentioned about charging them, that's the XOP sorted that out. Another problem we've had is this one, of keyboards getting ripped. My solution was to print A4 sheets, laminate them, and have that. It's not 100% effective yet, you just sort of have to apply pressure, but that's something where people can help out. We have uh, high staff turnovers in schools, and the whole idea is to actually train local people and students to be able to support this system. One of my goals is to encourage the use of free and open source software. Um, so it works independently. TuxMaths, TuxPaint, MusicPaint, OpenOffice. There's quite a few that work cross-platform now. Many people look at the XOs and laugh and say, cute kids' toys. From my experience, they're more than meets the eye. With the RPC project, I learn something new every day. Thank you. Thank you very much. We've only got one gift.
I guess you did the longest stretch. You can, you can break it in half and give him the other half. Thank you very much. Put your hands together for them, please.